Welcome to the last set of news, take a top stories in crypto and bring out bite-sized pieces. So today, as the thumbnail suggests, looks like Tesla might be getting back on the bandwagon as far as accepting cryptocurrency payments. And uh, I don't think this is like the biggest news of all time, but I think the optics is pretty astounding. Also, we'll take a look at uh, how well the uh, Ripple lawsuit is going against the SEC. And uh, we'll finish up with a little bit of a Masterworks deep dive video that I did, uh, which uh, we'll just go over briefly. So let's just jump right into it and take a look at what the heck is going on with the market today. So today's Wednesday. Uh, it's a nice day outside, just not a really great day uh, inside for the market. We're down 6%, and you have to understand, I mean, we had a pretty big run, so there has to be little pullbacks here and there, and that's just the, the nature of the beast. We know that in crypto, I mean, we were we were getting pretty spoiled, honestly. We were seeing some, some major momentum. We had uh, uh, two ETFs approved, run back to back. We had nothing but good news, so we're like, eh, it'll just go up forever. Great lesson to remember nothing goes up forever. So we're at uh, we're below 2.5 trillion. Looks like we lost about 6% in the last 24 hours. And the sentiment today, eh, understandably a little bit bearish. I'm uh, bullish long-term as I always am in the crypto market. I could really care less on the day-to-day -day operations as far as where things are going because I'm not a big trader. I don't do leverage trades. I just kind of dollar cost average. I've been doing that like the last four years. Worked out pretty well. But uh, today, <clears throat> If you've been trading, uh, it might be uh, might be a little hurtful, especially those long positions. So here's what we got. Uh, we've got uh, Bitcoin. Looks like we're doing uh, uh, okay at around uh, 58.7. Looks like we hit that that uh, level of support at 60, and it finally just broke down. I mean, after you hit it so many times, it has to. Ethereum uh, drops below 4,000. Binance is in that third spot, 4.52. Tell nobody cares. Cardano below two dollars. Everything's taking a hit, even Solana, 187. Even Solana went below a certain, uh, I mean, I think I picked it up today like around 182. I wasn't dollar cost averaging, but I'm like, man, that's a pretty good price. So I had to I had to snatch it up. And uh, what else we got? Everything's down except, <laughs> except for Shiba Inu. In the last seven days is up 173%. It's at, uh, in the last 24 hours, up 60%. And I think at some point it actually flip flop with Doge. I saw something, uh, a little snippet on George's channel or Cryptos or us. So, hey, congratulations to all you uh, Shiba Inu holders. And uh, I have no hate for anybody. I, I mean, great. I, I'm just under the realization now. That, and let me just blow this up real quick. This is not investment advice. This is just investment opinion. I'm just under the assumption now that we're all going to be rich, essentially, with, with, with what's going on in the crypto market. Even though there are some huge uh, peaks and valleys, in all honesty, I mean, just if we just look out the long term, like we always talk about, there's no way it can't go uh, up to 10 trillion, 50 trillion, 200 trillion in the next eight years. I mean, eight years to you know 100x, sure, I'm along for the ride. Everything's going in the right direction. So these day-to-day -day operations, don't care. I just kind of zoom out and I go. This is where we're at. So anyhow, that's what we have uh, right now for uh, the market. And then uh, just so you know, Shiba Inu went up so high and so fast, it actually crashed Coinbase, which is not surprising. Coinbase is known to do a little crashing here and there. And then uh, also, if you take a look at the traditional markets, uh, the s and down a little bit. NASDAQ up a slight. The Dow's down. Russell's down. U.S. dollar. Who cares? U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar is awful. And then the, but the big loser today is the Bitcoin index. And of course, with the ETF from ProShares, it's taking quite a hit. In the last uh, five days, remember, it started around $40, jumped up pretty pretty well, then just took a little slide sideways, jumped up sideways, dropped. And then, of course, that is uh, today, the 27th, and we're down the 38 mark. And then also, uh, Valkyrie, uh, the uh, ticker is BTF, buy the F and dip, right? Uh, they've got it at uh, same type of thing. Around twenty-five dollars, took a big uh, uh, dip and then traded sideways. And then everything was going good Monday. Monday for this one and also the pro shares did pretty good. And then it just jumped up, traded sideways, like oh no big deal. And then bam, down it goes. And then down it goes. And then we're kind of doing a little recovery. So that's what's going on. As we take a look at these markets, I cannot help but remember what Ricardo Salinas says. Uh, or said, Ricardo Salinas is the second richest man in uh, Mexico, multi-billionaire, good for that guy. But he did make a good point, and I just cannot forget what he says. He goes, uh, according to him, 
a Bitcoin futures ETF could prove fatal to the asset's price as it gives big institutional investors the power to use excess leverage, buying, and then dumping. And he goes, look, I've been trading futures for 40 years. It's all paper-based. Any bank can do whatever they want to, and it's a high time for manipulation. But in all honesty, I mean, everything's manipulated, so it really doesn't matter. So again, if we're looking at the short term, the ETF was good. Nice feather in the cap. I'm happy with it. Uh, but uh, I'm not surprised that you know it, it, it's volatile just as much as crypto is. And that's what we have in the market. And then lastly, just so we take a look at uh, the, la the last four hours for us, four-hour candles, we can see that uh, we've had quite an up and down. It's The RSI is going down to the oversold category and it kind of just uh, picks right back up. But we were we had a nice support level around 60 and then it just kind of just fell through. And now we just see that it's gone from, this is actually right here is the 60 mark and see it really went through. Then it really picked up again. But again, 58,000, 59,000, you can't keep hitting that uh, level of support without breaking through. Anyhow, that's what we got with what's going on in the market. And now let's get to some good news, which is great. Tesla, welcome back. Tesla informs the SEC it may restart transaction in crypto. Here's the thing. They're not going to just put it in there if they're not going to do it. I'm sure they want to do that because they they all see what's happening. And when we, we talked about Jack Dorsey and him talking about hyperinflation or stagflation, I mean, whatever you want to want, want to put it into. But we know that the dollar is not a is not something to be into uh, for the long term. It's great for short term. You know, you can't buy groceries uh, with uh, with with crypto. I mean, well, you can in El Salvador. I mean, you can in some places, but in all honesty, it's a uh, big uh, dollars are a short term thing. I think uh, crypto is going to do really well in the future. Just right now, we're going through the stumble block. So Tesla knows what's going on. And they said like this, look, the company explained that during the nine months uh, and it's September 20th, it purchased an aggregate of 1.5 billion in Bitcoin. And unfortunately, in its Q3 owners report, it shows that it's now worth 1.26 billion. So yeah, I lost about 240 million. What are you gonna do? The SEC filing further states, uh, and this is what they said, we may in the future restart the practice of transacting in cryptocurrencies for our products and services. And here's the thing, if you're any kind of vendor online or wherever else you wanna be, uh, just so you know that when you're transacting in, in debit or even in credit, or you have to do uh, wire transfers, it costs money because there's a bunch of middlemen. So if you can just eliminate that, why not? And especially if you can take crypto, I don't care what he takes. If he takes Doge, sure, whatever. Uh, but I mean, the, the, the fees themselves will be lower and you're into an asset that, uh, you know, isn't going to uh, depreciate because of hyperinflation or just inflation. So I don't really care so much about that this is going on and it's, you know, they're, they're taking the payments. That's not the big story. The big stories, again, just look back at the big picture. The optics of Tesla coming back in and saying, we are going to start accepting cryptocurrency. What it means is trust. They are trusting and they start to believe in the fact that cryptocurrencies are going somewhere. And of course, everybody touts about how a genius uh, Elon Musk is. So they say, well, I don't really, <clears throat> I don't really understand crypto that much, but uh, this guy who's sending people to Mars and is, uh, is, is digging tunnels under the LA system and has made these great cars and is doing everything else, believes in cryptocurrency, maybe I should. And maybe I should get into that. Maybe I should do some more research. The optics on that is amazing. And uh, hopefully it actually goes through. So let me just think about that in the comments section. Hopefully it leads to a little price action. Let's go on to our next piece where Ripple, <laughs> Ripple is the hero. And this was uh, <clears throat> Brian Armstrong, Coinbase that just went down because of uh, Shiba Inu. He just put a nice little tweet out and people are thinking, well, maybe he's saying this because he wants to relist it. I don't think that's it, but uh, maybe. So this is what we got. He states, uh, the Ripple case seems to be going better than expected. Meanwhile, the SEC is realizing that attacking crypto is politically unpopular because it harms consumers. That's the big thing. The SEC is there to protect the consumer, the consumer base from fraud. And unfortunately, by them stepping in and talking about, well, this is security, it hurt a ton of people. And uh, a lot of those people, including myself, including myself, uh, Ripple holders, XRP holders, excuse me. And if they keep doing these same things, they are, it's enforcement through legislation and they can't keep doing this stuff. And what's great about that is that there was such an outcry and Brian Armstrong says this, the irony is that the people they are supposedly protecting 
are the ones attacking them. And he references this whole thing from this fantastic article written by Rosalind Layton, uh, the crypto uprising the SEC didn't see coming. I know we always, we complain and we talk about it, but I think the constant cameraing with the SEC and sending information and going, you're not helping me, you're not helping me, you're screwing me, this is bad, The my, my investment went down because of you, you are not protecting me. I think that just kind of resonates and that's the exact opposite of what Gensler is trying to do. Some people say, well, Gensler is just there to, to, uh, to fulfill his own agenda. Perhaps, I just think that he's trying to do his job, but he's just not doing a good job at it. Anyhow, so I'm just gonna read this little piece in this article, I'll link it in. It's a fantastic article, it's a long read, but it's great. Just, you can always get the great information from the first couple paragraphs. She states, when the US SEC filed its bombshell lawsuit against crypto inventors Rebel Labs in December, it didn't expect blowback. I think they didn't at all. But during the pre-trial phase, Ripple's legal team has put the SEC itself on trial after years of conflicting and confusing guidance on the rules for crypto. The meltdown of the SEC's credibility with this two trillion global investor community exposes a costly SEC miscalculation. The miscalculation they're doing is they're trying to uh, use the Howey test from the 30s to put and, and, and determine what is a security in 2021. It's like, I mean, it's just it's just asinine to even think about. And actually, there was a, there was a pretty good uh, video. It was over on uh, uh, Minority Mindset, and Raul Powell was on there. And he, Raul Powell talked about that he has uh, friends in all over the globe. He talks about there's one, uh, uh, one of the regulators in Singapore, and they said that what they're doing over there is they're just saying, Look, we don't we we can't use an an archaic test like the Howey test. What we do is just we're here to protect the consumers, just like the SEC. And uh, all we just tell people is like, look, we don't approve of it. Seems very dangerous. You, we want you to be par- careful. Just do your own research. And that's pretty much what they're doing. And I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. Why can't they just do that and be hands off and then just let people go in? Look, if we can go into the casino and blow our college fund. You know, and, and and that's just and there's nobody else around. Who cares, right? It, it's it's up to you as the individual. So hopefully uh, this will all come about. I personally think that the SEC should just get out of the way and they should just say, okay, what we need to do is just go. We need a another uh, entity to determine as far as like cryptocurrency and digital assets. Maybe instead of going, you know, uh, just do like a triage. Projects come in, they say, okay, be based on this criteria, not how we test. This is a commodity. CFTC, you handle that. Based on this criteria, it's a security. SEC, you handle that. Based on this criteria, it's a currency. OCC, you handle that. And then off you go. It seems so simple, but it seems like they can't get out of their way. But I'm just glad that the uh, the case itself, as far as uh, as Ripple versus the SEC, is finally exposing the SEC to do the things they are supposed to do, which is give clarity to what it is instead of doing backroom deals and going after those projects after they come in, which is not the way to do things. Anyhow, let me make sure you think about that in the comment section. And then to finish up real quick, we did a deep dive into um, Masterworks. And uh, I have my exit strategy that I think people are pretty well familiar with in the links in the description. There's also my my 80-20 rules and all the different uh, exit strategies I have, but I added masterworks because i am so afraid of the inflation that is uh, that is going on and masterworks it's really all it is is just buying fractionalized shares of uh, fine art and the reason why i like it so much is because in 2008 when we had uh the the real estate and the whole shakedown with that then even the dot-com bubble one of the uncorrelated assets that did well was super expensive art. You know why? Because rich people, they don't play by the same rules that we do. So this is why I think it's actually a good one for me. My goals are not your goals, but we'll release that tonight. Uh, hopefully as we get it uh, reviewed. And that's it for today. If you want to uh, take a look more at Masterworks, there's a link in the description. It gets you to bypass the waitlist just for watching my channel, that's it. So that's it. So look, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, thanks, I appreciate it consider uh, giving a like and subscribe all that stuff and don't worry I know things get look a little bit uh, bleak sometimes when we we take a dip but it's just a Wednesday and that's it so thanks so much I appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one